All right, so we're live. I just want to welcome everybody here. Uh, this is Scrappy Doo Live. Of course, I'm Rob with uh, Scrappy Doo, and I'm joined by two other guests tonight uh, that you'll see down here in the little boxes. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves, and then we're gonna talk about how this how this program works and how you guys can get involved and ask your questions. Okay, so first of all, let's, let me introduce uh, Christopher Allen. Go ahead, Christopher. Hello, everyone. It is Christopher Allen, and I'm so happy to be back with all of you on the Scrappy Doo Hangouts. Uh, I am the owner and designer of the Brutus Monroe stamp line, and also you can find me at uh, Christopher Allen, uh, Christopher Allen Designs, excuse me, on YouTube. Uh, all right. Uh, next on the list here is Michelle Mabel, and she's been uh, she's been feeling like she's been working at Amazon today. We'll talk about <laughs> that in a little while. But uh, go ahead, Michelle. Hi everyone. I'm Michelle. I'm design team leader for Scrappy Doo, and I also have a blog at MichelleMabelCreations.com. All right. So, uh, just wanted to welcome everybody. If you if uh, you're brand new to this show, uh, if you want to comment, you can comment down below. Ask your questions. Uh, this program is live, uh, but keep in mind there's about a 30 to 60 second delay between what we're actually talking about and what you guys are seeing. Okay. And when you guys make a comment, we can always bring it up. You know, it looks like everyone's asking, you know, where they're from and stuff. So we got uh, we have Charlotte here. She's from Arkansas. I guess they're having some severe thunderstorms. Tornado watch. Stay safe, right? Um, all right, and we'll, we'll bring up a couple more here. We got uh, Lisa B here. She's from Baltimore, Maryland. And well, here's Beanie. She says hi from Beanie. So I don't know if that's a state or a country. <laughs> all right, uh, just joking there, Beanie. <laughs> all right, uh, so so one of the first things we we'll, we'll want to talk about today is, uh, of course, stamps. We got uh, we got Brutus Monroe stamps. We got the Scrappy Doo drops. A lot of stamping going on, and uh, let, I'm going to let Christopher Allen here talk about some of his stamp lines that he just released. Yeah. So, uh, so go ahead. Okay, uh, everyone. Uh, Brutus Monroe, again, like I mentioned earlier, is uh, my stamp line. Uh, the newest stamps that were just recently launched are the birthday sets. They are actually launched for my birthday, uh, which is actually on Monday. Uh, there is a discount code going on right now on BrutusMonroe.com. And if you just type in birthday at the uh, checkout with the discount, you actually get 30% off uh, for my 30th birthday. Uh, there are two brand new stamp sets that were released. Uh, if you are a member of the stamp club, and I actually believe there's one membership right now. Uh, there were a couple that were available before because if individuals, if their, if their cards are declined for two months, I do give one month of decline status in order for them to, to continue on. Uh, if there are two months of decline status, then I remove you from uh, the stamp club, and I send an email to everyone. So I think there's one left right now, uh, but you've got this stamp here, which is the uh, happy birthday to you. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it there but with the lights, but it is a, uh, a balloon animal dog. And the second stamp set, which is the uh, let's celebrate stamp set, I actually do not have yet. Uh, it was supposed to be shipped out to me at the same time as this set, and it wasn't with it. So they're planning on having it to me by the 13th to send out to everyone. Uh, and whenever I get it, obviously everyone that has already ordered it, thank you so much. You'll receive that once, it, once it's actually received to me. You'll get it as soon as it goes out. And again, I send an email to everyone letting you know that you won't get your entire order until that stamp set comes because it's just silly to send out uh, two different orders. And everybody has been great and understanding. And this is the first time this has ever happened <laughs> that the, the stamp, but there's Lots and lots of amazing designers and amazing different stamp lines that use the same manufacturer. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So since, <laughs> since that uh, is, is going on, the, they, they do have a lot more, obviously, that they're producing. Uh, and uh, just real quick, I wanted to go over that these stamps, uh, as well as the Dewdrop stamps, what an awesome name, if I might not add, uh, <laughs> they are made of the finest quality of photopolymer that is out there. Uh, photopolymer just simply is a material that allows details as well as all of the, uh, the, the thicker lines, the thinner lines, as well as, again, all the details on the stamps to really, really show up whenever you're stamping with them. Uh, I don't want anyone to be confused with some of the stamps that you'll find in the stamp stores. Uh, I won't mention any names or any manufacturers simply because I don't have the definitive proof that they are not photopolymer, but you'll notice that the stamps that are very, very hard to kind of squeeze or uh, the stamps that 
kind of have, uh, they don't have any give back to them, uh, as well as the stamps that have little to no odor, generally will not be made with a photopolymer material, and they will be a little bit more difficult to stamp. Um, in a video I did a while back, there is, uh, I show some stamps that are like that, but these are, and again, like I said, the, the dew drops are made with the best photopolymer, and you'll see that whenever you actually stamp with them, it's, I mean, it's the best stamp that you can, you know, the best stamped image that you can get with a clear stamp. So, so your, word, your word of advice is uh, smell it for the freshness, and if it yeah. smells, it, it's a good stamp, right? Yeah, if it, if it has an odor to it, and it's not a bad odor. Actually, there's a lot of crafters out there that love the odor of new stamps. <laughs> I personally, whenever I get a big shipment of them in, I get very, it's, 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 I think they smell great. Uh, but you'll know the difference between a stamp that obviously is a, a photopolymer and a clear stamp because there is a, a definitive odor to them. Yeah, I think both you and Michelle, they, you guys always comment on on the smell. Yeah. You're like, oh, I love, I love getting stamps. I love getting. <laughs> they getting smell great. Right. They smell great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, BruceMonroe.com. He he's got some stamps. Uh, we we just released uh, a new stamp as well. I mean, of course, th this this one right here was our was our first one. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it was the um, the expert hunter set. We got that out right before um, Easter. And then last night, we we started with the facial expressions, and I'm going to share my desktop here and show you show you what we got. So let me go ahead and share my screen here, and we'll take a look at the Scrappy Doo. All right, so there's Christopher, by the way. But uh, here here's here's the stamps. If you go to ScrappyDoo.com, uh, it's under the Do Drop section. Okay, so uh, underneath there, you'll you'll find these. Find these new facial things, uh, facial expressions. That's what we're calling them. And uh, of course, we have set one because we already have a couple other sets with facial expression, facial expressions that are that that are in the works. Okay. So what what we're doing with this is uh, they basically will fit, uh, you know, the Scrappy Doo body. And Michelle has designed this so that you, you can see right here. So if you can grow or shrink our Scrappy Doo body. That it should fit a 3.75 inch doll, 4.75 inch doll, and a 5.7 inch doll. And also, we're trying to sweeten this deal here. Is if you you can click this little drop down menu here, you can do stamps plus Scrap Factory. Uh, Scrap Factory is normally a $30 program. Uh, we've we've made this so that you can get started with doll making, and then these eyes will ship. Uh, you know, uh, the day after you you guys order them, or the day of, depending upon what time. And you can start stamping those eyes on those dolls. So it's it's only a five dollar extra charge. Stamp set is fifteen dollars, or you can go ahead and uh, get the stamp set with Scrap Factory for just five dollars more. So the the Scrap Factory program, I meant to, to to go along with this here. We have a lot a lot of expansion packs. Uh, you know, last week we had costume parade. Uh, you know, this week we implemented. The medical team expansion pack, as well as uh, the scouting. Okay, so lots of cool stuff with with going on with this. You know, ch check out the check out the medical team. We have the orderly rooms. We have the wheelchairs, stethoscopes. All, all this cool stuff can be added to that scrap factory. So you guys can just quickly sw swap out heads, swap out hair, and it will export an SVG for you guys to import. So that's what we got got going on with the uh, with with the dew drops, of course. Now we, we are lim limited supply with this. Uh, I think it has a little a little uh, you know we had 13 of those in stock, I, and I'd have to check. Maybe I can check a little later to see how many stamps with the uh, scrap factory we have left. So uh, th we started off with 100. So we're I think we're doing pretty good for just a one day sale with this thing, guys. So I pr appreciate if you guys bought it, they'll be shipped out. And hopefully you guys will get it here soon. All right. <clears throat> so um, let me go ahead and stop sharing here. Yeah. So uh, I'll pull up some comments here. We we get to uh, you know Teresa here. She said that's an awesome deal. Yeah. I mean I mean it it is. I mean if you if you're a scrap factory owner, uh, I mean you know what kind of great deal this will be. But uh, we're just trying to get the scrap factory out there, and so you guys can start building dolls right away. And get the stamps. 
So that's what we're trying to do with that. Uh, all right, just trying to scroll through here, see if any uh, comments are going on. Some of you guys are not seeing the video, because uh, I can see some people, they're saying they're not seeing the video. Uh, you, you may want to tell them to go ahead and refresh, refresh the, the screen, and you should be able to see it. Uh, all right. So we got a, to, um, we're going to go to Michelle. She's got, a, she's got some design team stuff, right, Michelle? Yes, I do. All right. Uh, you can go ahead and cue that up. Please. Okay. Give me a second to share my screen. All righty. Now we've got a couple more comments here. We've got, uh, we got Sharon here. She said, wow, it's great for your website. going to love this site. Oh, yeah, man, I tell you, we, got, uh, we, we just moved to the store over. We did have almost 500 Scrappy-Doo uh, patterns in our previous store. We only took like 300 with us. And, of course, we're making more every week. So lots of stuff. All right, go ahead, Michelle. Oh, I think you're muted. Let me... Sorry about that, guys. There you go. <laughs> uh, this is a layout featuring Christy and her best friend's daughter. Uh, she used the Sleepover Pals, which can be found in the Scrappy Doo Vault. She also used the nail polish from Spa Days, uh, Movie Night Popcorn, and hair from the Scrap Factory program. And this next layout is by Nadia, and uh, she said she's become obsessed with animal files lately. And the elephants are also from the Safari Pals and inside the vault members area. And that's all the projects for tonight. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to dig into some Q and A with with uh, you know with Christopher here. I tend to always go to his group. He's got two guys and a cricket uh, Facebook. You can always go to Facebook, search two guys and a cricket, him and Ken, who uh, usually comes on the show, but he's, uh, he's ill this evening. But, um, but, yeah, I try to pull some questions out of there, and I thought maybe Christopher can, can answer them, you know, help his group out. So uh, one of the first questions here, Christopher, if you're ready for this stuff, I am ready. All right. Well, well the first thing, we're, we're talking about vinyl, okay? And uh, Terry, uh, he, he asks, is there any way that he can straighten up his vinyl without actually starting this whole project over again? I mean, what kind of vinyl tips do you have for Terry? Yeah. Uh, the This is a question that's actually asked a lot. Uh, earlier in my YouTube career, I did a lot of vinyl videos. Uh, there actually is a vinyl video that is uh, where I put vinyl on a Christmas ornament. And if you uh, look at that video, it act I actually show you exactly what I'm going to kind of describe to you now. Uh, but if there is a situation where uh, your vinyl is, um, if you're saying, if I'm reading your question correctly, I'm thinking it's because your vinyl is not straight on maybe the project. It's maybe a skew or, or crooked a little bit. Uh, if you cannot peel the vinyl off right away, you can absolutely use a heat gun, uh, and I would use the heat gun, and I would just go over top of the, uh, the image or the lettering or whatever you're actually placing for about 10 seconds. You don't want to do it for too long because it will shrink your vinyl down a little bit, and then that will release the adhesive, and you're able to pull it off. Uh, if that's not the question, if there's a situation where your vinyl is bubbling or you are seeing kind of little, um, kind of little tiny crease marks in it, you can also use the heat tool. I always suggest getting a craft pick or a straight pen or something that, that you'll be able to use that, that has a sharp uh, pointed edge on it or end on it. And you can actually poke the bubble and then again use your heat gun. Uh, what the heat gun is going to do is it's going to shrink down your vinyl only by honestly like a sixteenth of an inch, not even something that you'd even be able to notice. But when it does that, it actually shrinks down and, and makes it tighter to the object that you are putting it on. Thus, then, the bubbles and the creases and all of that tend to kind of iron out. That's, that's what I use a lot on curved objects whenever I'm using the vinyl. Uh, if you're using an Oracle vinyl, you won't really see that many issues like that. With a permanent outdoor vinyl, you'll see more of that because the adhesive is much, much greater on the back of the vinyl. Now, if he has to start over completely, uh, is there any treatment that he has to do to the material before he can re reapply the vinyl? I meant like, like if we're doing glass. Uh, if you, to... I would just use Windex. Uh, 
I use Windex because it's. I, I feel like it's, it doesn't harm necessarily the surface. If you are using glass, though, you can use rubbing alcohol, and that will take off the adhesive. Uh, it really depends on what the material is that you're working on. If you're using something like leather or uh, some sort of a, like a material that would be like a, like a fabric or something like that, I wouldn't use rubbing alcohol because that may very well pull up the color, uh, especially if it's faux vinyl. I have made that mistake before, and my black vinyl then turned white or yellow. So uh, using something like Windex or even uh, I use the Method. Uh, it's the Method spray is the brand of it, and it is all natural, so it does not harm anything uh, whenever you're using it. So I would try kind of those different, uh, those different items to see. Always test a small area, obviously, of your project to make sure it's not going to hurt it. All right. Uh, well, we got this question here. This came from, came from Facebook as well, and I, I guess they're... It says, is this what people are talking about when they're referring to contact paper instead of transfer paper? Well, I mean, what's the, what's the deal? This is my favorite thing in the world to use for vinyl. Uh, every video that you will ever see me do with vinyl, I use that exact material that you see in that bin. Um, Cricut does sell a transfer paper. There are quite a few different, um, different kind of, uh, of companies and, and different manufacturers that sell a transfer paper. Transfer paper is fantastic. If you want to use transfer paper, uh, it's, it, I mean, obviously that's what its intended purpose is, but it will be pricier, and also with some transfer paper, it will not be as transparent as you maybe want it to be whenever you're creating a layered vinyl project. Uh, for instance, if you're doing a project like an iPad cover, and you have a shadow on letters, or you have maybe a, uh, an intricate, uh, maybe like a doll, and you want to put the different layers on that doll with the vinyl. If you have a, uh, a more opaque kind of transfer paper, you aren't really going to be able to see where you're placing it on your project. That contact paper is almost completely transparent. I have seen a lot of issues where individuals say that it's, they can't get the vinyl to come off of the, the contact paper. You just need to rub harder. I mean, that's honestly the, the, the only trick kind of to that. Uh, on canvas, you will run into some issues, especially if you're using a canvas with a, uh, an unfinished surface, because whenever they create those canvases and put the gesso on them in the factory, they actually spray them with the gesso as opposed to paint them on. So there will be a lot of dust and a lot of residual gesso kind of pieces that are on it. And uh, when you first try to put your vinyl down, you're going to see that there are going to be, there's going to be powder, and that's why it's not sticking. So I would suggest using the transfer paper. I mean, I suggest using the contact paper all day long. It's what I use. I love it. It's a dollar for, I mean, unbelievable amounts of, of transfer paper. And if you ever have any problems transferring it over, again, just rub it harder. Or, again, you can use that um, the heat gun. And if you put the heat gun over it for just a small period of time, it will actually release the adhesive from the back of the transfer paper and allow you to press it down. So... It's, it's, I mean, it's really, I mean, it's great. I, the only reason I ever started using it is because I didn't want to wait to get transfer paper. So, and it just happened to work, and it works really well for me. All right. Uh, we've got a question here for you, Christopher. Uh, Sharon, she wants to know, uh, what vinyl can I use to decorate my camping chair? Would that uh, be like an outdoor vinyl, or would that be a... Um, I'm thinking there, this is probably going to be a... Uh, one of those canvas camping chairs. Uh, Sharon, if you could comment again and let me know if that's what it is, but I will kind of assume that it's a canvas camping chair. I would most likely use heat transfer vinyl. Uh, with most camping chairs, I actually made a camping chair uh, probably last year around this time. Uh, you can actually pull the top of the camping chair off. Uh, the, the canvas part actually lifts off of the, of the actual uh, chair. And you can use heat transfer vinyl, which is in most groups called HTV. That's what they're, they're talking about. And you can just iron that onto it. Uh, also, heat transfer vinyl is fantastic for whenever you are weeding uh, because there is an adhesive that is holding the heat transfer vinyl onto the actual, uh, the clear, like kind of clear transfer sheet, I guess you would call it. And the weeding is a dream when you're using heat transfer vinyl because you're not actually picking up the pieces of vinyl off. It's it's a stuck to that clear sheet. So I would use heat transfer vinyl if you do not want it to be kind of a permanent option. I have used regular vinyl on items like that, but just know that it will not be weatherproof. 
and it may not last for the entire duration of the year. Um, but it is that is definitely an option for you, or you can use, of course, the outdoor grade Oracle vinyl. Yeah, she uh, she made the comment. She said, "Yes, it is canvas." So yeah, I, I would that. use uh, a heat transfer vinyl if if you don't want to use the heat transfer vinyl or you don't want to do anything with heat. Oracle does sell an outdoor vinyl, and that outdoor vinyl is, I think, actually graded for up to five plus years uh, to be used outdoor. And it does not; it has a color fast, like color fade kind of, um, kind of. I don't know if you would say it, it's like a kind of a warranty uh, where it will last out outdoors. So you can use that as well. But that stuff, just so you know, is extremely sticky. <laughs> it's, I mean, it is. You, you really need to be ready to, to use that and, and kind of have the, the chair really close to you because the minute you pull up that vinyl, if it sticks to itself, you are not getting it apart. <laughs> I see. So, so what, um, I mean, what, if I use indoor vinyl outside, I mean, how long would that last? Would it's, it last all summer? Uh, it's really going to depend. The What they say by the kind of uh, the the duration of life of a vinyl is the fact that if it's going to be in the sun and also if it's going to be in the water. That's what they test it for. Um, I've seen a lot of horror stories where individuals use non-outdoor vinyl on their cars and that kind of, when it sits in the sun, it will start to shrivel up and it will kind of just fall off. Um, if you live in a climate where it's not super sunny all the time, uh, you might be able to get away with that, but I wouldn't suggest it. And that's why you'll see that there's a difference between the vinyl that you're supposed to be using for like car decals, which is again the outdoor vinyl, as opposed to the uh, vinyl that you are using indoors. Like the, um, the Cricut vinyl that you purchase uh, is considered an indoor vinyl, and uh, you can, you can kind of tell the consistency of them is a little bit different. So I would always suggest using the outdoor for outdoor projects like mailboxes. Uh, not that long ago, I actually just saw a mailbox where someone used indoor vinyl on it and kind of said, word to the wise, don't ever use indoor vinyl on a project like this because it was literally crumpled up and it looked terrible. So it's, I think it might be 50 cents more for a sheet of it. And it's, it's definitely worth your time and, uh, and leading and, and getting everything out because you don't want to do your project again. Uh, Samuel here. He has this question here for you, Christopher. Uh, oh, hi, Sam. He's he's a new a new member in one of the groups. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. He, he asked a question about the heat transfer. Can you layer it with different colors and you know, like for example, a t-shirt design? And how does the opacity hold up if you're doing the layers? Will the colors bleed through? You absolutely can. The only thing that I would not suggest layering up would be glitter. Uh, I I mean. I've seen it done before where you can put a glitter underneath of like a uh, of another color, but you're going to start to run into a situation where you see the uh, kind of the uh, what is it the, the word that I'm looking for? You're going to see kind of the the consistency of the shirt come through the texture. That's the word I'm looking for. You'll see the texture of the shirt or the glitter come through. Uh, that's also something if you're using heat transfer on like canvas. Uh, if you're using like a looser canvas, kind of going back to the chair, you will most likely see that through the heat transfer vinyl. Um, but I would, I mean, I've done lots of heat transfer vinyl where I've actually doubled it up and, and used different layers. Uh, heat transfer vinyl is fantastic for layering up because it is an extremely thin vinyl. So you, you won't run into many problems with that. I just wouldn't suggest kind of doing the layering of the glitter unless you do kind of a slice out of the glitter. And there's a lot of videos, if you look on YouTube, for that where you kind of slice the different layers out of each other as opposed to layering them on top of one another. All right. It can definitely uh, be done, and it looks great. All right, so we, uh, we've got another vinyl question here for you, Christopher. Mm -hmm. This one comes from Jana. She says, is there any vinyl that is for the marine environment? Uh, her hubby wants a new boat logo for the hobby. Absolutely. Yeah, I would just use outdoor vinyl. Uh, there, there are some different vinyls that you will, if you go to a vinyl website or like a sign warehouse website, they will actually give you the full kind of, I guess the, the full rundown of where everything is safe to be used. I would use an outdoor sign grade vinyl is what you might want to look for. That's going to be a thicker vinyl. That's the vinyl that you see on pizza shop signs. Uh, that's the vinyl that you see on signs that are out like in the, um, 
like at a, a restaurant, that's the kind of vinyl that you will use there. And I would use something like that. It's also you're going to, if this is going to be something that would be in salt water, uh, you may want to check, you know, kind of if there's something that might be graded for that. But I'm sure outdoor vinyl should be should be perfectly fine. Um, outdoor Oracle uh, vinyl is what they use on race cars. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos when I was studying kind of how vinyl works whenever I first started with vinyl. And they use the Oracle vinyl on those. So I can't imagine that, you know, the 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 two wouldn't kind of coincide with each other with the elements that they're going through. So just an outdoor Oracle vinyl is what I would suggest. All right. Um, all right, so we're going to go into, if you could, Christopher, design space. Yeah. And show us, because uh, I'm, I'm seeing this as a common question in the, uh, you know, in the beginner kind of a cricket thing, and it's the font. How do we, how do we install a font to use in design space so that we, you know, we find a pretty font that we want, and, you know, I see it on the, I see it on the website. How do I get it into Design Space? Absolutely. Well, I'll go ahead and I'll share my screen, and let me get everything up here and ready to go. We just want. And while, while you're doing that, I'm going to answer a few questions here. We, we got, uh, we got Vicky Woody. She wants to know: Is there any uh, discount coupons for the expansion packs? If you use uh, two guys, cricket. That's all one word. It's uh, I mean, it's the number two, and then it's guys cricket. Uh, that will get you thirty percent off of the expansion packs as well as the uh, scrap factory program. In case you guys want to purchase that. All right, go ahead, Christopher. I got your screen up. Are you able to see my screen? I am. Okay. Uh, this is my absolute number one favorite website to get fonts from. Uh, it's called defont.com. I use it a ton in my videos. Uh, it really has kind of everything that you could ever need uh, within wingdings, within different sports fonts and different uh, logos and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into a cartoon font just because it's the first thing that's here. And I'm going to pick out, uh, let's do, um, uh, let's see, what could we do that's, that's a nice easy one? Let's do Angry Birds here. So say you want to do like an Angry Birds invitation or you want to do like an Angry Birds banner for a birthday party. Uh, this is where you would get that font from. The nice thing about this is you can actually type in up here in the custom preview, if I could spell my own name correctly, uh, and then you hit submit. And it's actually going to show you exactly what the font is going to look like with your uh, praise that you're writing. I think this is super important because there are a lot of fonts that will have a weird character or it'll look different if you capitalize something. So that's great uh, on that website there. And then you'll just hit download. Now I am on a Mac, so this might be a little bit different, obviously, if you're, than if you're using a PC. But it's going to, it's, it's, you're still going to follow the same steps really with installing the font. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on, mine goes down into the bottom kind of left hand corner here. Uh, I think that that does the same thing for Chrome. Uh, for uh, for any computer, uh, and then uh, if if you if you are running Chrome as your your browser, and then um, here is it's going to pull up here in my downloads, and then it will show me right here. There's the font, and I'm just going to double click on it here, and then it will pull up the font for me down in the bottom, and then I just have to hit install font, and then my font is now installed into. Uh, into the computer. Uh, Bergamot Ornaments is one of the last ones that I installed. This is a font that's fantastic if you are doing chalkboard uh, printing and you'll see kind of, uh, uh oh, I've actually never seen this before. I've never seen a problem with the font before, <laughs> have you? Rob? It, it may be because some, maybe some characters are missing. Okay, I don't know. I'll just install it. Okay, so now that, that, now that is installed, and you can see uh, here is our installed font, and we'll close this out, and then we'll close out my downloads, and now let's go back up here, and within this, uh, this bar up here, I have the design space, obviously, and what you always want to do, and this is probably the number one, actually it is the number one, I'll just throw that out there, it is the number one question is, when I install my font, why can't I find it? because you need to refresh your browser. Uh, the, it is not 
except, I mean, this this is holds true to really any program except for Adobe Photoshop is the only program that I found that this doesn't hold true. That you have to go out and come back in to have that font get loaded into your software. So once it's loaded in, we'll just go just like any other day of the week. We're going to go and we're going to hit create new project, and then we're going to uh, we're going to add text. So once uh, our screen uh, gets up here, oh, it's already up. Okay, we're going to hit add text. And then we'll just type in um, whenever we uh, whatever we want here. So let's just type in Scrappy. And then what will happen is our this will just come up as just our regular font. That is the the font that comes up is Cricut Alphabet. All the time is what comes up right off the bat. Now right here in this little area that I'm clicking that I'm kind of highlighting, this says all fonts. I always click on system fonts because then that's going to upload all of my system fonts in here now and then they're ready to go. Uh, you don't have to do this. Uh, it does take a little while sometimes for this to happen simply because it is literally uploading every single system font that you have on your computer. Oops, and I accidentally clicked one. Uh, and you can actually type in here, so that was called Angry Birds, and we'll click on Angry Birds and then we'll be able to, it, it will load in that font and the, the characters kind of directly from the computer. So as we can see here, this is that scrappy, uh, the scrappy word that I just wrote, and this is in the Angry Birds font. So you can go ahead and use it like this, or we can go into our Layers panel, and we can switch this to, uh, to a write. So it will actually write an outline of, these, uh, of the letters here, or we can actually go ahead and we can make this uh, print. So if we hit print, and then we, let's just change it to, uh, let's change it to red then this is actually now going to print and it will cut all the way, it will cut around each of these letters that are printed out. This is a great tip for if you do not have red paper. Uh, I hear, uh, I've heard a lot of individuals that say, oh my goodness, I'm out of, I don't have this specific color of green paper. And if you go ahead up here and you, and you can change this obviously to the color that you want to use and you can then of course just cut it out just like it is here and once you cut it out, it's going to be that exact color that you need. The nice thing also about the custom color picker is down here. If you go to most of your scrapbook paper websites, they will give you this color number down here. And then you can take that color number and put it in, and it will just match the color of what you're using with your project, and it will work great. So that's kind of just a quick one, two, three <laughs> tutorial of bringing a font in. And you can use that, again, with any font that you find online. Uh, and I think that it, it, it works really well. All right. Uh, thanks, Christopher, for doing that for us. Because I, I, I know it is a pretty, uh, pretty common question out there for beginners uh, of design space. So thank you. All right. So uh, a, as we promised in the description, uh, we got some giveaways to do. And I'm going to let Michelle talk about those. All right. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay, tonight we're having a giveaway for the newly released facial expression stamp set and also the Expert Hunters stamp set. And if you go to my blog, uh, michellemybellcreations.com, and it will be the very first post. Okay, and if you scroll all the way down, okay, you can enter the giveaway right here. And you can log in either using your Facebook uh, account or your email. And the giveaway will run for three days. All right. Now, uh, so, something I do want to mention to you guys, because uh, I meant if you're like, hey, I, I plan on winning this thing, uh, so I'm, I don't plan on buying. Well, here, here's what we're going to do for you, okay? So uh, I meant because we are limited on this stuff. If you do if you do win, we will refund your money. You know, simple, simple as that. So if you're, if you're wanting your stamps, and but you're holding out. You're like, oh, I got, I got my name in this contest. I know I'm going to win. <laughs> and you don't win, and you lose out on the stamps. We don't want you losing out on the stamps. Okay, so we will refund your money uh, in case you do win. So if you guys purchase stamps, enter in the contest. Uh, you, you know, we'll refund your money. Uh, did you have anything else? Oh, I, if you scroll back up on there, Michelle, I still got your screen up. Uh, th there was a question on the scrap, scrappy do uh, Facebook page, and they were saying. They say, hey, I see your image, but uh, are they are they individual? They didn't know how. I guess they, they didn't know 
what they look like. So if you go to Michelle's, um, michellemybellcreations.com, you can actually see what those little stamps look like. Uh, when my wife saw it at first, she, she's like, is that the head? No, no, no. That's, those are the eyes. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to maximize the space that we have on these stamps that we get. Um, so that's, that's why. Uh, oh, Christopher, here's a, here's a design space question for you. This is from Deb Brooks. I forgot about this while you're on design space. She's like, Chris, what can we expect the next update of design space? Is it going to be like 3.0 or are we still, still waiting? Um, I can't comment on that right now. Okay. Uh, I can only say kind of to stay tuned. Uh, I know that they're constantly working on updates. Uh, I know that they are constantly kind of revamping things. Um, there are uh, the, there are going to obviously always be some changes that are coming through, but obviously they will let everyone know before that happens. Uh, and uh, I will just kind of stay tuned. I, I can't, you know, I don't have any information that I can give out to everyone, but. I'm sure that you know there should be something that will be coming in in the future because uh, they you know they did release that there would be some changes and updates uh, throughout 2015. All right, here's here's another design space question for you, Christopher. We got uh, design space. When using the pen and it doesn't fill in the letters or words with ink, just does the outline. Can that be changed? Or uh, that I stuck another, to cut? probably one of the top five questions that get asked. Uh, there is an amazing blog. Uh, her name is With Glittering Eyes. If you just type that into the Google search, uh, you will pull up her blog. She has an amazing write-up on the, um, the way that they, they are filled in and things like that. And also, uh, our friend that comes in, uh, Kay, that usually, I, I'm not, her, her, the name of her blog is escaping me. I think it's Clever, Clever Someday. Yeah. If you, if you type in Clever Someday, they actually link up their blogs together, which is great because that's how... I found with glittering eyes was from uh, Clever Someday. So if you uh, take a look at their two, they have the most amazing write-ups on these. The short answer is no. You cannot go in and tell a font to fill itself in with a pen. But the long answer is there are tons and tons of fonts that are out there that are already filled in. Um, Sketchblock is one of my number one favorites that will fill in for you. Uh, there's a couple uh, that are out there that are very popular, again, on her blog as well as on Kay's blog, and they give you all the information. They even go over the pens that you can use. So I would definitely take a look at their blogs because they're really going to give you, really from A to Z, everything you need to know about the pens and the different fonts that you can use. All right. Let me scroll through some more of these questions here. Oh, uh, Beanie, Beanie from Beanie Town. She asks, uh, how, how many fonts can you install before your computer slows down? Have you, do you have a lot of fonts installed on your computer, Christopher? Is it I mean, I have. I, I think I lost count. So it's it's certainly the font files are 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 not enormous files. Uh, the reason they come through as a zip is because there are lots of pieces that are sent with them. Uh, so that's why they come through generally as a zip. I know that I saw somewhere that someone was talking about. Uh, that they had like thousands and thousands of fonts on their computer and it did not slow anything down. So, I, I mean, I don't think that you would ever really you get to the point where you have so many fonts that it would slow down your system. Uh, you can also keep your fonts on an external hard drive that I have seen uh, people do. So you can get an external hard drive and you can keep a lot of your fonts on there. So. It's, it's completely up to you. That is not my forte, so I cannot teach you. I mean, Rob just had to teach me how to turn my volume up on my computer. So it's not something that, that I would be able to teach you how to do that, the technical part of it, but uh, that would be something probably Ken would be able to teach us because Ken uh, is the one. Ken and Rob uh, teach me really everything that I know about about uh, kind of doing stuff with the systems and the computers. All right. Uh, let's see. we got got... Um, oh, before I get to this question, Kay, Kay did end up uh, posting her link. Uh, oh, thank you, you, Kay. You, you guys can't see it on the screen, but it is in the comments down below. So find Kay Hall, find that name right down there, and click on her link. For some reason, it's not shown all the way up here. But, uh, yeah, cleversomeday.wordpress. That will get you close, but just scroll down, click her link. And she has um, also... Um, I think they're called single-stroke fonts. Forgive me, Kay, you know how I am with these terms and words. 
I think they're called single stroke fonts, but she she can probably post something down. She has all of that information listed too. I mean, literally, please go to Clever someday, go to her blog and favorite it because you will go back to it over and over and over again to find tips and tricks on everything. I mean, she really has one of the most comprehensive and amazing blogs that I've ever been to. I'm probably on it at least once a week learning something, and hopefully someday we'll have her back on this program because she always has so much information. And, uh, and she works for NASA. I mean, how cool yes, is that? Yes, I mean, come on. I mean, she, she, she knows her stuff. So <laughs> it's definitely something that, uh, that, that I, would, I would check out and, and keep it kind of at, within arm's reach. Uh, Deb, Deb Brooks here, she says that she has over a thousand fonts stored yeah. on hers and she hasn't noticed a thing. So, I, I guess keep on loading, keep on loading them. Uh, Terezic here, she says, Christopher, can you, can you explain how we can use dingbats with a design space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if you want to kind of elaborate on that. Uh, I've used dingbats uh, on cards uh, with the embossing, the perfect embossing pen. I think it's called the perfect medium pen. Uh, every time I need one, I, I can't find it, but I always have a million of them laying around because whenever I find something that I really like, I'm always a nervous wreck that they will stop making it. I don't know if any of you are like that. Maybe I'm just crazy. But, oh, here it is. Uh, it's made by Ranger. It's the perfect medium pen, and I will put this in my pen holder or uh, in the Explorer. It fits, and uh, I wouldn't use the brush tip. I would use the bullet tip one because this, this one actually doesn't reach down all the way, uh, or it reaches down too far. And I will draw the dingbat with the, the perfect medium pen, and then I will use embossing powder. Uh, there is a video on my YouTube channel. It's, the, it's a Halloween video, and it's a card, it's a video with a card on the front. And I don't have any of those cards in here. Oh, I do have one up on the top of there, but I'm not reaching for it. Uh, where you can actually use the dingbat and draw out the dingbat and then thus in turn emboss it, and it looks amazing. I mean, you literally make whatever size stamp you would like for the front of your card. So that's how I use the dingbats uh, with drawing. I haven't really used dingbats with cutting before just because they're really intricate, and it's not that the Explorer would not be able to cut an intricate shape like that, but I haven't really found a need for um, a, a cut-out dingbat at this point. All right. I'm not not seeing any more questions. So like I, like I said, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to post them down below. Um, I'm going to take a moment here and show you, you know, give you a little preview of what's coming out next with the Scrap Factory program, as well as I'll show you a couple of designs on what they can actually do for these uh, with the Scrap Factory. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. All right. So uh, here's a little preview of what's coming out next. We're, we're going to have a clown. I uh, hope no one's scared of clowns, but we're going to have some clowns, uh, clown set. Uh, we, we also have some accessories to put in there that I didn't show in this one. So uh, stay tuned for that. That should be out, uh, I would say, probably tomorrow evening uh, if I have the time. They're all set up, ready to upload. I just need to find a time to put it in the store and get that active. So if you're wondering what Scrap Factory will do, I meant, uh, I meant here, here's one. This one's from Jennifer. And, you know, you pick a hairstyle, you pick an outfit, and as you can see, with this photo compared to this photo, I'm going to see the same body, but we, we have a brand new outfit and we have some accessories here. So this, is, uh, this set comes from the, uh, the new medical, medical team set that's on the scrappydo.com website. So uh, th those are just, just some examples of what you can do with, with the Scrap Factory program. Pretty, pretty versatile, pretty, pretty cool. We're also going to be doing a doing a contest here with uh, uh, we talked about that last week with with two guys in the cricket. They're, they're going to be doing a, a scrap factory create a crazy doll contest. Uh, we're we're going to make the program uh, we, we're going to get the program all written up. So uh, during the time frame of the contest, uh, the, the program will be active. You guys can create your randomized doll. It will give you a random hair. It will give you a random outfit, and it will give you a random accessory. So you could get a guy's hair on a princess outfit, you know, and some dental floss or something, you know, so something crazy. So they, they got the rules, uh, you know, that they're, that they're working up. So I, th I think it's a pretty cool contest, pretty cool idea, and, and I'm going to be excited to see what kind of crazy random dolls you guys create out there. Uh, all right. Checking out 
this. I don't know if we... I haven't read this yet. It's, this one comes from Chad. It says, uh, how would wood, like an old fence piece, needed to prepare for vinyl? So how would you prepare, I guess, an, an old piece of fence wood for vinyl? Uh, yeah, if you want to, and I'm assuming this is probably uh, because you want to maintain the look and the feel of the weathered wood, I would just go over it with a, um, a piece of uh, cheesecloth, or I would go over it with maybe like a... Um, like maybe a damp paper towel, uh, just to kind of get particles off of it. Uh, wood is an amazing uh, kind of uh, a medium to put vinyl on because it's very porous. So the vinyl loves to stick to the wood because there's lots of things for it to stick to. You just kind of want to make sure that you use a tack cloth or even use a piece of contact paper uh, and peel off the back and put it on your hand and kind of go over it. Uh, I've used a lint roller before to get things off of canvas, so I'm sure that that would work on the wood as well. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and apply your vinyl. I wouldn't use anything, uh, you know, with a, um, you know, with the, I guess, with the the, the alcohol or, or paint or anything like that, because you will lose the the dexterity of the or the, or the look of the wood that you the kind of the weathered wood look. And you also don't want anything to stain the wood. Uh, in just the area that you're working on. So that, that would probably be the easiest way. If it's a smooth wood or if it's a, a, a high gloss kind of paint and it's kind of uneven, you might do just a little light sanding. But high gloss also loves vinyl, so it really depends on what your what you what look you want for the piece. Just make sure it's clean. That really that's the only the only trick to vinyl is making sure that it has something to stick to and that the surface is clean. All right. Uh, all right, so uh, Sharon, she has this question here. I guess she must be a new Scrappy 2 live watcher. Anyway, she says, how often do we do this live show? We try to do it every Thursday, uh, you know, at least once a week. Uh, if, if you want to know when the next one is, what you need to do is you need to go to scrappydo.com slash live, and uh, that will be a little newsletter that you guys can sign up for. We'll, we'll typically send out a newsletter maybe a day, day or two before what we're you know, to go over what's going to go on, who we're going to talk about, what we're going to talk about. And then when you try to, and we didn't this week, would be to send an email, you know, letting you know about 20 minutes before we go live, let you know that uh, we are going to go live and come out and join us. But these shows are recorded, so if you happen to miss it, you can just go to YouTube and you can still comment, pretend it's live, and we'll, we'll come back and check it out and answer your questions. Uh, th this one's for you, Michelle. Uh, hopefully you can queue up your screen or queue up your mic. But uh, she wants to know: Can you go over what we have to do in, in, to enter this contest? If they go to my blog to michellemabelcreations.com, and uh, like I said, it's the very first post on the page, and they just have to scroll down and enter the raffle copter giveaway, and uh, they can enter for the newly released uh, facial expressions set one, and also the Expert Hunters stamp set. All right. Uh, here's another tip, Christopher. When we're talking about the wood, they said that they they went out there for like an old barn, and they used uh, an air compressor and a, a medium brush, and it seemed to work pretty good. So another, another tip, tip out there for if you're trying to prepare some old wood. So. All right, uh, not seeing any more questions, but uh, I do want to say that uh, that next week here, um, you know, we're going to be doing something with the with the silver bullet. So we got the silver bullet all lined up for next week, and I'm going to sh I'm going to show you, you know, give you give you a little prep, give you a little little preview of you know. So if you have any questions, feel free. I mean, you can ask them um, and sign up for that Scrappy Do newsletter. Because we will, we will be uh, sending that out for this stuff as well. So this is what we got going on with uh, with this. Go ahead and share. All right. So uh, you know the you know for, first of all the, the the silver bullet machine. I mean uh, this is what it looks like. Okay. It's it's uh, it's pretty powerful. Cuts cuts a lot of materials that you probably wouldn't think uh, normally would cut. You know. So I did. You know. I got lots of materials. And uh, you know, for example, with this one is it was just a, you know, piece piece that they said on the tag it said it was soft leather, 
Uh, this was cut with one, one swipe of the blade going around this little square. Uh, I got the little caliber to see how, how thick it is. So there's that photo. It's got 0 .04 uh, you know, inch. Uh, if, you're, if you're used to mils, millimeters, we got uh, 1.11. I meant that the thing cuts smooth. I meant if, if you're interested in, in learning about another cutter, seeing what it can do, seeing the powers of it, seeing, uh, you know, seeing what people are doing with this machine, uh, make, make sure you go to scrappydo.com slash live and uh, we'll send out that newsletter once we once we have the full schedule and time going up for next week. Okay, so that's what we got going on. L lots of lots of cool things happening. You know, Scrappy Doo's got the stamps, got the got the expansion packs coming out. I just feel like everything's all coming together, and it, it and uh, you know, hopefully you guys actually actually use those stamps, and we'd love to see those photos on the on the Facebook page because uh, we you know. I mean, even even my wife, she's like, I hope I get a stamp set. So, Michelle, that's a that's a cue to you. I better get one, okay? Because because all the stamps go to Michelle, and uh, <laughs> she is my Amazon drop shipper. Okay, so if you live near Pennsylvania, you'll get them pretty fast. <laughs> that, that's where Christopher lives as well. I hope you're ready. There's there's about mm, about twenty two hundred stamps <laughs> that are going to be coming to you soon. From Brutus Monroe. <laughs> so oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's work that fulfillment. <laughs> that <was laughs> hey, oh, before we go, Christopher, can can you explain a little about the Stamp Club? What what are, what are they getting? What's what's the details with the Stamp Club? Seems uh, like a pretty cool thing to join, but you said you only have like one spot one spot yeah, open. I think that right now, and I might I, I haven't checked yet today. Uh, there there might be one spot left. It's actually uh, if you go to Patreon.com which is www.patreon.com. And then there's at the top you can search for a creator. Uh, you just search for Christopher Allen and it will pull up my page. It's basically a page where you can support creators uh, for videos or different things that they do. Right now I am still using the Patreon page for this, but very soon, and I, I'm, the announcement will probably come mid-June because there's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, for Christopher Allen Design, as well as Brutus Monroe in mid-June. Uh, we may be transferring over to something else, uh, simply because Patreon, it's, it's a great system to use, uh, but not really for the purpose that I'm using it for. Uh, and that's because it does the, the payments, and this is actually a good time to explain this to everyone, because I got a lot of emails about this today. Uh, if you are on the, the Patreon uh, stamp club, you do receive uh, one of these stamps every single month, uh, for five dollars, you get a two by three stamp that includes shipping, and that also uh, includes the stamp. Uh, the nice thing about that is this stamp retails for three dollars and fifty cents. Plus, you would normally have to pay shipping for it, uh, and you actually get this stamp before anyone else does. Uh, these stamps are shipped out the moment that I receive them, so I actually place them on the website generally the next day from whenever I receive them. So you actually get the stamp kind of uh, probably a couple of days before everyone else does receive it. And you also see the design before everyone else sees it. And I can't wait for everyone to see next month's design. Uh, <laughs> but when you sign up for it, again, it is that $5. But the Patreon takes out the payments in three ways. So what that means is there is one day that the payments are taken out, there's a second day that they're taken out, and then there's a third day that they're taken out. Unfortunately, I have run into some problems with some individuals that attempt to pull their payment right before the beginning of the month, and uh, they, they obviously have been removed from Patreon, but the, the problem with that is when they do that or they switch their payment, uh, it, I have already set out the stamp and there's no payment for the stamp, which is fine if I, if I take a loss on that, that's, that's something that you know I, I kind of have to figure out, but I had a lot of people doing it at one point. So I have to wait to kind of protect the amount of stamps, because I put aside 60 stamps every single month to make sure that all of the Stamp Club members get them. That means that I do I hold off on those six, 60 additional stamps for the uh, Happy Birthday to You, at least for this month, from other people to receive them. Uh, when I released the Love Stamp set, unfortunately that was when I had the big fallout where eight people removed their payment uh, before the Love Stamp got sent to them. And unfortunately there was a waiting list for that stamp. And those eight people that wanted that stamp couldn't get it because I had it reserved for those individuals. So I now must wait until all the payments are received and everything is processed 
and then I send out the stamps to everyone. Uh, if you're in one of the first waves, uh, again, it's only going to be within a three-day span, uh, and I try to always send it out within the first week to week and a half because Patreon promises that all the payments are done by the fifth of the month. Uh, again, that's that's a little bit iffy, but I do send out, thank goodness, uh, I have my mom and my sister that now help me. <laughs> we we did uh, 60 of the uh, the stamp sets that we do at the beginning of the month, and then we did um, 168 orders uh, for uh, last Monday, this past Monday. So. We sent out a ton of orders, and again, thank you so much, everyone, for the orders that you placed. Uh, make sure that you head over to take a look at all the stamps, because uh, we have two or three of them that are on very, very low inventory, and uh, I won't be getting those back in until the next shipment for the May stamp, which will probably be probably the last week of May. All right, yeah, Deb, Deb Brooks, she said, Shame, shame, shame on those folks. She said she loves all your sets from me, Chris. Oh, thank you very much, Deb. I hope she got her set today. <laughs> Just like everybody got their set today. And then, Michelle, maybe you can answer this this question. Um, I mean, I know we say that uh, they, they fit our dolls, you know, 3.75, 4.75, and 5.75. But, uh, you know, Trezor, she wants to know, you know, can you sort of describe the dimensions of the dolls, or I mean, of the of the faces? Because I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that they'd work with with other dolls, not just from Scrap Factory. And uh, you know, someone even brought up they'd be great for teachers. You know, putting a little smiley face on their on their homework. You know, so it's not just for dolls, not just for Scrap Scrap Factory. But we thought we'd throw Scrap Factory in there just to help you get going. Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, you can use them uh, for other uh, doll faces. Um, because there is five uh, different uh, face stamps and there is three different sizes, I don't have the dimensions in front of me right now. Okay. So I can't, I can't give an accurate uh, dimension of each face. Um, but I will, I will check, try to get that information and we'll put it on the site. Okay. Good deal. Yeah, so you can go back to the site uh, and we'll, we'll have that up later. Later this later this evening or later tonight or tomorrow or tomorrow. Whatever. Well, what's goes. nice about it is you get three sizes. Yeah, there's three uh, different sizes. You're mm -hmm. not, I mean, if even if you are are doing something, you know, with a with a doll or with maybe like the some of the cricket cartridges, like the paper doll cartridges or the teddy bear parade or something like that, uh, you will have three different sizes to choose from, which I think is awesome. Uh, you won't have to worry about. Oh goodness! Is this one face that I received going to fit onto this character? You have three different options to fit it onto that character, and uh, obviously the dimensions are going to come. You know, the eyes and the mouth and everything will come together closer depending on which one you want to use. So I, I, it's an excellent stamp set. Oh, I forgot to ask you, Christopher, about the uh, the Misty. Um, I meant. Is that is that for beginners? Is that intermediate? Uh, for I mean, it's really it's, is it it's, for anybody? It's for anybody, really. Uh, the the tool that he's referring to is actually called the most. I think the most ingenious stamping tool invented. I think is what it stands for. <laughs> um, and so I, thought, I thought Misty was a cigarette at first. I was like, <laughs> yeah. What about the it, Misty for? But you, it, it's actually it allows you. It, it's basically I don't have uh, it here, but it's basically it's kind of like a like a book like this. And you place your your paper here or whatever you're stamping, and then you when you put your stamp on top of it, and then you close it, and then once you open it, your stamp's attached on this side, and then your paper is down below, and then you can put your paper in the same place that everyone, and you can just continue to stamp in the same place. Uh, Christina Warner has a video on it as well as um, is it Christina Warner? Yeah, Christina Warner, K Warner Designs on YouTube as well as uh, Jennifer McGuire, they both have great videos using it. Uh, what it's really used for and what's fantastic about it is if you're making multiples of the same card. Like if uh, you're in a card club. Yeah, it, it, it does come with magnets. That's very good, Rob. You, you, I, I'm impressed that you knew what a card club was. Um, <laughs> you, you take the, the it, and it has actually magnets and like little positioners, so you can actually take your stamp and just continue it's, it's got grids too. I meant uh, Michelle's pulling it up right now on her on her screen. I meant it, it is a pretty neat idea. And I was like, I was like, how do you use this thing? They got YouTube videos on it. And I mean, it's how it's, to use it. it's incredible. It's really, I mean, it's really cool because it just like it says there, it is just like a, a screen kind of like a screen printing kind of gadget. 
but it works really, really well because you can stamp over and over again in different areas, and you can create cards uh, to do it. And I actually didn't think about this, but I wish I would have used it for my tutorial that's coming out <laughs> uh, this weekend because I did the uh, with this, the twinkling H2Os, and I needed it positioned on the same ones over and over again. So maybe I will use that in that video. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I thought it was a cool little cool little thing, and uh, now, now that Scrappy Doo's in the stamp, I'm starting to pay a little more attention to stamps. So before it was just listening to Brutus Monroe talk about him, and then he finally convinced the Scrappy Doo. He and actually, if you guys want to know know like a little secret, uh, Christopher he came up with the name Dewdrops Drops for us. I'm He's still a, waiting for my royalty check. Yeah, he he said <laughs> call little dew drops, you know. We had a very uh, we had a very long conference call one night, and that's when the dew drops were born. Yes. <laughs> we had a a very long kind of meeting, you could say, uh, uh, reviewing how it would all work, and and now here they are. Yeah, and uh, I was asked, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, being new to this, I'm sort of scared of shipping international, uh, but. I sort of saw how much the prices were and stuff, and they're not that bad. So we, we did open it up to uh, to the UK. We opened it up to Australia, Germany. So uh, if you guys are living over there and you guys are looking to purchase, uh, feel free. Uh, just go ahead and check out. And if your country's not on there, send us an email. We'll, we'll check what it is. And I mean, you, you guys just pay. I mean, it's almost just you guys just pay the shipping. You know, we don't do any shipping and handling. So. All right, so I think that's uh, that's about it. Uh, oh, De De Deborah Baroques here says, she said, oh my gosh, I love the Misty. It saved me so much time and money. She said that she's a terrible stamper. Helped her, helped her so. So yeah, I mean, it's a cool little idea. I mean, I'll, I'll give them that. Yeah, it's a great product. I love it. See, Michelle owns it. I guess I'm the only one here that doesn't own it. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah. Scrappydo.com slash live. Sign up for the for the next week's uh, webinar, and uh, I guess we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks. Thanks for coming out, everyone.